Hey everyone, today we're looking at Jesus' second temptation in the wilderness. Then the devil took him to the holy city and stood him on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, don't put the Lord your God to the test. So how do you resist temptation? Just know your Bible. That was kind of the, the way that I first learned this story. And it's true that Jesus responds to every temptation with a quote uh, from the book of Deuteronomy. But I think we can also see it's not quite that simple. For one thing, the devil can also quote scripture, which is pretty dangerous if you have a certain view of scripture, right? God says it, I believe it, that settles it. We've all heard that. Well, apparently God says that you will always be protected when you fall. It's in Psalm 91, you can look it up, and it has lots of other very black and white promises there. So you're going to give it a shot? Bumper sticker Bible theology is immature and can be unhealthy. I can tell you from experience, faithful people can fall and not be protected. And literally, this was the tragedy my family experienced a year ago, and I'm sure you've got your own experiences too. You don't have to be testing God to know that things are more complicated. So this is partly a temptation to believe in a simplistic view of divine protection. You know, it's one thing for me to tell my kids that nothing bad is going to happen to them when they have these sort of unfounded fears. Are you a spiritual six-year-old? None of us think so. We all think we're better than that. In fact, this temptation is also about pride, really. You know, doing this trust fall at the temple in Jerusalem, it would have been a great way for Jesus to start his ministry with some spectacle. Right? Surely that'll get you a lot of followers immediately, Jesus. Now, Jesus is going to develop quite a following, but how does he do it? Through the slow work of building relationships. Instead of the look-at-me attitude that motivates so much of ministry, uh, he says on a social media platform that's meant to get attention. And it's that same pride, I think, that makes us think we're immune to suffering. Surely God won't let anything happen to me. I'm too important. Doesn't God know how much I can do for him? I mean, yeah, bad things happen, but, but not to someone like me. Of all people, Jesus could have believed that. But he didn't. He chose to trust God, even when that trust led to the cross. It's tempting to want to believe in a God who would never let you have a reason to cry. But isn't it better to trust in a God who promises to wipe every tear from our eye?